Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome to Young Titan World. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to be talking about a movie that has been here for the ages. I checked the timestamp on that movie and it says 2011. At 2011, I was probably this close to getting to high school, but then my parents moved to a different part of town and then I had to change everything and do everything all over again. I'll get into the details in a different episode. But today we're going to be talking about a very old movie that had two parts. One that came out in 2011 and one that came out in 2014. I'm talking none other than Horrible Bosses 1 and 2. Now, it's got really amazing, funny characters like Charlie Day, Jason Sudeikis. I think in the next one it had uh, even Chris Pine that um, well-declaimed handsome guy, which I normally don't even give a crap about because, you know, as far as I can tell, it's not really my thing to give my, you know, handsome points to guys that I don't really like. But I like them. They're really great characters in the movies that they play. So yeah, just fuck it. Today we're gonna talk about Horrible Bosses. Horrible Bosses 1 and two. Now, Horrible Bosses is just about three dudes, three friends. Although it doesn't seem like a very great friendship. Seems like they're more abusive of Charlie Day in this one. But what do I know? In the first one, the three friends all complain about their bosses, you know? It's like, like they're having evil, devilish bosses who are ruining their lives in more ways than one. And they decided they need to do something about it. Set the score straight and put their lives back on a track that they love and appreciate. So, um, they come up with these wild scenarios of actually solving the problem by, I don't know, killing them? Yeah, killing their bosses, actual murder, and putting them in caskets. They wanted to kill their bosses so they can live happily lives. Which kind of feels weird because if you wanted to sort a problem, death doesn't usually come as a first option, does it? Unless, of course, you're suicidal. In which case, get a therapist, please, for all our sakes. We don't need a fashionable, quite beautiful human being killing themselves. Um, excuse me. Anyways... Horrible Bosses starts off with these three friends and uh, we all see the problems that they're going through. For their bosses, we've got one who is actually good, but he dies and his son comes to take the lead. And the son is a coke head crack pot guy. He's, you know, he's, he's addicted to that. But for some reason, he likes Japanese stuff and he trains. It kind of makes me feel bad because I like Japanese things, but I'm not addicted to coke, so it kind of throws me off about me liking Japanese shit. But anyways, that's one of the bosses, and Jason Sudeikis is the person who is tolerating the bullshit from him. Now, the next boss is one who is incredibly selfish, an asshole, and not at all what he's like in real life. Unless, of course, you consider the claims that he's a child molester to be true. I don't really know. But <laughs> in which case, as we find him being the person who is stopping our gallant and faithful protagonist from getting his happily ever after at his workplace. And he, you know, he's struggling for this position, but his bad guy boss decides that he's going to absorb the position, break down walls, and have a big-ass office. Whilst also telling the person who is fighting so hard to get it that he never will, and his ass is his for eternity and past. So, yeah, that's kind of really freaky and also kind of, like, very dark and evil. Yeah, just, just, just the, the, the level of acting in that scene is just to die for. Now... The next one is kind of like my favorite out of the entire list. I'm not saying that because I'm a pervert, but it's because it's just really nice and I love Jennifer Aniston. So Jennifer Aniston is the third boss, all right? And she is hot. She is so hot in this movie. I am asking how exactly did we not see this in Friends? I mean, Friends, she was subtle. She was mild. It wasn't that big of a deal. I didn't even think about it. 
But then in this one, oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Whether it was the eyeliner, the makeup, the growth. Cause you know, she, um, back in friends, we could just assume that she was like a little bit old, not that old, kind of in her twenties. So like the hat is cute, but the hat here was, Oh, Oh my God. It was just, it was so much. I, I was just like thrown away. I, I didn't really, I didn't realize it till I watched it again. I've watched horrible bosses in the past. Like I've watched it in the past. Like that was back when, and I wasn't even allowed to watch it back then because you know, 2011 high school, getting to high school, you're still a kid. You're in a Christian family. Uh, they don't really give green lights when it has a very sexual theme to it. So, you know, they're limited, but you know, your curiosity, your curiosity is there. So you catch glimpses of that shit before they turn off the TV. And um, that's exactly what happens here. I mean, Jennifer Ashton, she's this sex craving boss that's trying to fuck Charlie Day. And um, I don't know. I would say that even though it was a movie, I would have much loved to be Charlie Day in that moment. But yeah, all the things aside, it was a really crazy moment. And then we got to see a lot of um, them trying to come up with so many other plans in order for them to control their bosses. You know, just take them off their backs, kill them, quote unquote. But they go seek assistance from Jamie Foxx. But in this one, he's he's a badass motherfucker. But, you know, the only the worst thing he did was video piracy, which I don't know if you can go to jail for that this time anymore. I mean, come on. Or can you? I don't know if you can. Maybe if you can, you'd, I've, I've probably... <laughs> I, I've done nothing of that sort. I am a saint, young man. The worst thing I've done is take paper without asking. And that was only because they told us to write down our names and my friend didn't want to give me the paper, so I stole it. Anyways... As with that, uh, Horrible Bosses shifts into so many gears where we have three idiots. I mean, like, one idiot, another who's not an idiot, and the other who's a wisecrack, but he doesn't have any willpower. He's a spineless little sap that follows whatever his friend does, which, honestly, sometimes I look in the mirror, it's like, hey, you look just like him. Anyways, I... <laughs> Uh, Horrible Bosses really becomes crazy for the first one because um, one of their bosses is actually killed but not by their hands. They're not able to follow through, but they're able to sort out all their bosses. And I think when I watched the first one, I, my take from it was that, you know, you can't keep taking bullshit from people like for the rest of your life or you're just going to regret it. In most of the cases... They chose to do something about it, obviously, and it always came into a full hyper, you know, hyper moment, which no one can actually dissuade from. But uh, I think personally, it was more of an experience that I loved. And, um, you know, we could talk about part two in a different one. But I just have to say Horrible Bosses was, was nice. It was nice. It was great. It was great. It was great. I mean, if we take out the part that there was a lot of coke in it. And uh, never seen Jennifer Aniston acting like that before. So it was a change of pace. I guess my teen hormones just really wanted that, didn't it? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic evening or afternoon or morning. Bye.